happy fourth Sunday of Lent, everyone, and happy solemnity of St. Joseph. Today is Sunday, March the 19th, 2023. Happy Sunday, everyone, and happy weekend. St. Joseph, pray for us. He is the foster father of Jesus, our Lord. I hope you all had a wonderful Sunday. I was meaning to actually pre-record this, but I forgot to. This is long before my classes, to be honest. Um, but I forgot to pre-record this, and I was going to then record this yesterday, and I then I was going to record this this morning, but I, I never had the time. But anyway. Um, so the fourth Sunday of Lent, we wear rose. We wear pink during Mass. Because we're almost there. We're past the halfway point. We're almost at Easter. Just like the third Sunday of, of Advent. We're almost at Christmas. It's the How you make rose is um, the purple of the penitent season, whether that's Advent or Lent, and the white of the, of the um, glorified season of Christmas or Easter. That's where rose came from. But anyway, um, yeah, I was also at the Shroud of Turin display, um, a replica of it yesterday. I loved it. But anyway, um, in this dance passage, um, we'll be reading about the blood and water and all the rest. So, yeah, I'll make a separate video for that. But anyway, I shall be reading to you all um, the Gospel of John, chapter 19, Verses 1 through, 20, uh, through 42. And the Revelation of St. John, chapter 19, verses 1 through 21. I hope you all are enjoying Lent, and I hope you all are, all, are also enjoying the um, Ruth and John's books. Anyway, let us begin. This is coming up on... Two minutes and 30 seconds of this video. I apologize for the long intro. But before I further ado, um, before I continue on, please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos and playlists. Now let us begin after two and a half, over two and a half minutes of intro. Gospel of John, chapter 19. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged, and the soldiers wore wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak and they came to him and said hail king of the jews and they struck him repeatedly once more pilate went out and said to them look i am bringing him out to you so that you may know that i find no guilt in him so jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak and he said to them behold the man when the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard the statement, he became even more afraid, and went back into the into the praetorium and said to jesus where are you from jesus did not answer him so pilate said to him do you not speak to me do you not know that i have the power to release you and i have the power to crucify you jesus answered him you would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above for this reason and the one who handed him me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called the Stone Pavement. In Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold, her king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, 
Shall I crucify written the king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. The Crucifixion of Jesus So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, in Hebrew, Galzaka. There they crucified him with two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus, the Nazarene, King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this, read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, my Bible is falling apart again. I apologize. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage of Scripture might be fulfilled that's, that says... They divided my garments among them, and for my and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Mary of Mary of Magdala. Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, Behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold her mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order to that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth when jesus had taken the wine he said it is finished and bowing his head he handed over the spirit The blood and water. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, and the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one soldier thrust his lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened, so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. The burial of Jesus. After this, Joseph of, uh, Joseph of, of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took the, his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and also... Uh, I misread. Also bringing, 
Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now, in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. Just making sure that I have the rest. Yes. And that was the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verses 1 through 42. Joseph of Arimathea also shares the feast day of St. Patrick, which was March 17th. Um, St. Patrick's Day. Um, I found that out many, many years ago when I first got a particular book of saints. Um, that's when I found out. So, yeah. Anyway, um, on to the Revelation of St. John. But yeah, yesterday's presentation of the Shroud of Turn, the, like the replica of it, was like so amazing. Father Gary Schlack did it of the Hamilton Diocese. He is currently in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. I can't remember what parish. But for my fellow Canadians out there, you have to see it. Um, it was at St. Anne's in Hamilton yesterday. And today, I never came for it today because I was working all day today. But when I went to Mass, he did the homily on it. Then he did, um, this is yesterday, Saturday. Then he did um, the a short presentation after Mass. Then there's a theology on tap for the young adult Catholics. And he did the presentation and talk to us um, down there, like downstairs in the meeting room of St. Anne's. And tomorrow on Monday, um, uh, October, well, not October, March, <laughs> March um, 20th, tomorrow, um, he will be doing it at St. San, St. Sanzelos, Sanzelos, St. Sands for short, the Polish parish in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Not sure what time, but anyway, um, it was a, Beautiful talk, very touching, very emotional. I basically got the talk three times yesterday, and my mom got the talk twice today because she attended the 10 a.m. mass and the 12 p.m. mass at the ends. But anyway, um, yeah. With that being said, I'm in the Revelation of St. John now. Um, I'll make a separate video concerning his talk. Well, this video will be forever. <laughs> anyway, I had a wonderful day today. Work was great. My co-worker made this beautiful, delicious shrimp braised dish for my parents and me. Revelation, um, chapter 19. After this, I heard what sounded like the loud voice of a great multitude in heaven, saying, Alleluia! Salvation, glory, and might belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great harlot, who corrupted the earth with her, with her, with her harlotry. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. They said a second time, Alleluia! Smoke will rise from her forever and ever. The twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. The Victory Song A voice coming from the throne said, Praise our God, all you his servants, and who, who you revere him, small and great. Then I heard something like the sound of a great multitude, or the sound of rushing water, or mighty peals of thunder, as they said, Alleluia! The Lord has established his reign. Our God, the Almighty, let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding day of the Lamb has come. His bride has made herself ready. She was allowed to wear a bright, clean linen garment. The linen represents the righteous deeds of the Holy Ones. 
Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who have been called to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he said to me, These words are true, they come from God. I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Don't! I am a fellow servant of, of, of yours and of your brothers who bear witness to Jesus. Worship God. Witness to Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, the King of Kings. Then I saw the heavens opened, and there is a great white horse. Its rider was called Faithful and True. He judges and wages war in righteousness. His eyes were like a fiery, fiery flame, and on his head were many, many diadems. He had a name inscribed that no one knows except himself. He wore a cloak that had been dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. The armies of heaven followed him, mounted on white horses and wearing clean white linen. Out of his mouth came a sharp sword to strike the nations. He will rule them with an iron rod, and he himself will tread them will tread out in the wine press on uh, the wine of the fury and wrath of God the Almighty. He has a name written on his cloak and on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then I saw an angel standing on the sun. He cried out in a loud voice to all the birds flying high overhead, Come here, gather for God's great feast to eat the flesh of kings the flesh of military officers and the flesh of, of the, the flesh of war, of warriors the flesh of horses and of their riders and the flesh of all free and slave small and great then i saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered to fight against the one riding the horse and against his army the beast was caught and with it the false prophet who had performed in its sight the signs by which he had led astray those who had accepted the mark of the beast and those who had worshipped its image the two were thrown alive into the fiery pool burning with sulphur the rest were killed by the sword that came out of the mouth of the one riding on the horse and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh and that was the revelation of saint john chapter 19 verses 1 through 21 the eating of the flesh Ugh, gross it just reminded me of um back in genesis when joseph um was with i guess pharaoh he was in pharaoh's prison because of Potiphar's wife um and the baker and the i can't remember the other person's precision but how um the dreams they had and how the baker had dreamt about the birds eating up his um bread and how joseph was saying how the he would be hung in three days and how the birds will eat his flesh that just it just reminded me of it i don't know but anyway yeah so you probably noticed i wasn't wearing glasses yesterday's recording yeah i pre i pre-recorded that one and i also pre-recorded tomorrow's the 20th and i pre-recorded the 21st and the 22nd so don't be surprised if you don't see me wearing glasses. I'm pretty sure I have not done tomorrow's recording, the 20th. But anyway, the 21st and the 22nd, I have definitely not, I have definitely did pre-record. But anyway, um, yeah. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, one thing I don't like about these glasses um, is that like... Basically, it, it reflects off. I don't like that at all. But anyway, um, I look forward to seeing you in tomorrow's video. And happy Solemnity of St. Joseph. And happy fourth Sunday of Lent. Happy weekend. Happy Sunday. God bless. Love you all.